Let's get started. Hi, I'm Steffi and I work at Etsy.com as a software engineer. Oh, I should speak here. Uh, let's build a shell. So what is a shell? Um, when the computer boots up, it loads the operating system kernel. And the shell is a thing enclosing the core of the operating system. And the kernel mode is some kind of privileged mode in which commands can run that are really close to the hardware. So it's like a special safe space for that. And um, the shell is a different space that surrounds this operating system kernel. So shell and kernel, I guess it makes sense. And um, the shell that we, um, the shell is uh, the place where we can interact with the system to run commands. And the shell we're going to build today is a very, very tiny shell, so it's very simplified. Uh, what does it need? Our shell should have a prompt where we can input things. It should parse our user input and um, then some, run some built-in commands for job control and, of course, run other system commands and show their output. Okay, let's do this. So um, we need a main function for, for doing this. You can see the main function here. And um, can I bring my pointer over here? So, yeah. Haha. -ha. So you need a main function and you need a loop. So this is the while one loop, so it's looping forever. And then the first thing we have to do is uh, to print the prompt. It's defined up here. And then what we do is we f get s, so we're getting a string. Uh, from standard in, we're getting max line characters. And standard in, it's usually the keyboard, or if you work from elsewhere, it might be a terminal. Um, then we have to check for errors when we get the string, and we have to check for the end of file. And then the only thing that's left to do is to remove the trailing new line from that line we just got, and then we are ready to evaluate it. We are good to go. And what I'm doing in my first step when I developed this, I just printed it out to see if it works. Ah, and um, yes, another thing we have to do, we have, we have to include this um, header files here um, to use some of the functions. So I use printf here. Um, and to use this, I have to include this header file. So I could just uh, look this up in the, whoops. I could just look this up in my, um, ah, oh, sorry. I can't drop into my shell, so I'm just going to tell you what I do. Um, so um, uh, you could just look into the man page. You could just go man uh, three print f, and then you would see inside the man page it would tell you include this file. So that's how you build this stuff. And um, yeah, what do we do next? Um, so we have now a shell which is very stupid. It doesn't run anything, or it's very lazy. We could say. Um, so how can we solve this? How can we make it do something? So the first step uh, to do this is we have to parse the command line. So we have to parse that line that we just got from the input. That means we have to read it and make sense of it somehow. We have to understand its underlying structure. So here is the parsing happening. And what is the underlying structure of a command, actually? Um, to do this, we are defining a data structure in C for this. Uh, it just has the number of arguments here, and then it has the arguments list, including the command itself. And then we have some field which tells us if it's a built-in command, or it could be none if it's not built-in, if it's like a system command. <laughs> this is the biggest listing ever. Um, so what do we have to do then? Um, then we have to write a function to parse the line we got from fgets, right? And what this function is, um, it's also a while loop. I hope you can see this here. It's a while loop. It's this block. And what we are doing is we're going through the line character by character. And we are trying uh, to split it up into words, which we call tokens in parsing lingo. Um, and what we first do is we state that uh, what's between those tokens. So we state that a space, a backslash t, backslash r, or backslash n, um, are delimiters between our tokens. 
And then what we do is uh, in this loop, so the first case is super easy. When we encounter the end of the line, we can just break, we are done, right? Um, but then what happens if we are trying to find a token delimiter? We are scanning the line um, until we find a delimiter, until the next delimiter. That means we found a token. That means we terminate the token with a null character. No, that's what you do with every string in C to say the string is done here. And then we, we can record this token as the argument. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. We can advance one character and continue reading the line. So imagine now we have consumed the entire line and we have our um, array full of arguments here. So that's the place where we are now. So, um, and if we then found that this um, command that we actually parsed is empty, so this uh, count of arguments is null, uh, is zero, um, we can ignore it because it's just like a blank line, right? Uh, the last things we have to do is to check whether it's a built-in command. So we just look at the command and look it up if it's a built-in in our built-in list. Um, and then we have to check for the end of the line if it contains an emperor's end. This would mean that our job would be running in the background. And that's also what we return. So we return is background here. Um, to execute a command at the level of the operating system, we have to make a system call. And the mother of all system calls is called execvp, and it's, acute, and it's executing any process. Let's look at its main page. Should I try to do this now? I think that's cool. Uh, no. So I can hide this. Yeah, but I can't see my shell. It's so different from at home. I'm sorry. I practiced so many times. It's probably full screen somewhere else. It's yeah, but I can't go there. Got a control left and right, maybe. I, don't know. Yeah, I can't even go back now. <laughs> but then now it's on my screen. I'm so sorry. I can't drag it now. Which I could do at home. Mm -hmm. There might be another um, screen mode. You cycle through the screen modes. Uh, presentation. Yeah, it doesn't go there. I'm really sorry. So let's just finish with the presentation. Uh, let's just continue, and I show you in the end. And I try to do this in the end. Is that cool? Yeah. Um, so where was I? Um, the mother of all system calls. It's called execvp, and it's executing any process. So you could look at its man page. You could type man execvp. Let's imagine this now. And it would say um, execute a file. And that's right, because a program is nothing more than a file that we wrote code in. And then we make that file executable. Um, what happens when the file is executed? Let's try it out. Let's build an example. Let's run ls. So if I would run this thing now, which I can, I'm really sorry. Um, if I would run this thing, what would happen? Um, so it would print high there, I imagine. Can I still use my pointer? Yeah, it would print high there. And then um, it would execute uh, my ls command, which I set up like this. So I'm giving the command ls minus la, and then I'm exec VPing it by giving it the command and the arguments. And then there's this and done. But if I would actually run this now in the shell, you would see that it's not printing and done. Why is that? Because if you look at the man page, um, it says that um, it's starting, uh, it's loading another process image. It's replacing the current process image with a new process image. That doesn't mean it starts a new process. It just swaps in a new ima image, the exec VP. So we could say it morphs the current program into another program. That's a very peculiar system call. It's also interesting in terms of return values. So if this thing returns, um, an error has occurred. Normally it wouldn't re return. It would just morph into the other program and run that one. OK, awesome. We can run a command. But maybe not so awesome, because in this way, our shell would become useless after one line of input. <laughs> So how do we make our shell not run away with the command that we are running? 
Can we make it morph into the new command and still be responsive at the same time? Yes. yes you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to tackle this, we can call a fork. Um, and fork takes a process and it makes another identical one. Let's look at this example. Um, uh, so what's happening here, uh, we are recording the child PID. The PID is the process ID, so it's the ID of the running process. And then we are printing before fork, and then we are doing the fork here. We get the child PID from that. And then we are uh, printing after fork. So if I would run this, what would it print out? Yeah, first, first the uh, parent PID then also the parent ID and the child ID and then the uh, parent ID again, because it's forked. Yeah, think. so... Can, can you repeat that for the uh, recording? Um, so what he said is it would, uh, it would um, run uh, before fork and then it would uh, show the ID of the parent and then it would print after fork with the parent ID and then it would print after fork uh, with the child ID. So um, because it's forked, suddenly at this point of forking, we have two programs running. So before that, we have one program running, and then after that, we have two programs running, of one in wh which is the parent and one is the child. So parent forking returns the process ID, um, and usually it's the, it's the uh, parent uh, process ID plus one. So in this example, um, as you said, we would see the parent running first. Can we also make the child running first? Of course we can. Uh, for this, we can use another system call. It's called wait. And wait gets a PID and waits for that process to finish. So um, here in this point, before um, I'm running this, I could just write uh, wait for the child PID, which I just got, and then the parent would wait for the child to finish. So in this way, I could make the child run first. So fork is strangely interesting too, but also very peculiar. If we combine fork and exec VP, we can use the child process um, to run the command, uh, keeping our shell alive as the parent. What does this look like in practice? What does the real eval function look like? Remember we left off after parsing here, so I was here parsed the command line, but what's happening now? So we get our running in background, or we get a parse error if it's minus one. Um, and then we have to ignore empty commands, and then what we have to do is we have to make a decision um, based on the, uh, whether it's built-in, we have to run a system command, or we have to run the built-in command, and we're pass passing whether it's in the background here. And that's all. So let's look at this function run system command now. So uh, this is the most interesting function of this talk. Um, run system command is uh, running our command and then um, also we have this background here, right? So uh, again, we are recording the child PID to make this decision uh, what to do in the branch of the um, parent and what to do in the branch of the child down here. So um, we're doing two different things. And um, the child is where we can run the exec VP. Uh, so we're running exec VP here. It looks almost like in our example before. So we are running the command with the arguments. And uh, if it fails, if it's uh, returning smaller zero, we say command not found. But usually it shouldn't fail. Usually it should work and run our command. And then in the parent branch, uh, it's a bit more interesting. Uh, we have to decide, uh, yeah, this is where the shell continues. And we have to decide whether our command should uh, run in the background or in the foreground. So if it's running in the background, um, it's easy. We can just print child in background and print this child PID that we have from the fork. Um, and otherwise, if we wanted to run in the foreground, uh, we have to wait for the child to run first. And that's all. We're done. <laughs> uh, so we should, we should try this out with a slow process in the background, but this is going to take me a while. I'm sorry. So how can I bring this over? Try for one then. No. Maybe the collect windows thingy in the preferences. Was it there? Yes. No. Ah. And now I can't see it here, so it's very awkward for me. Um, and I'm also in a different shell than I was before. Uh, 
So, uh, do you want to see all the examples? Am I f okay on time? No, not so much? Okay, then let's just look at the, f the share. So we can say GCC. Well, I can't see it, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah, I'm in my share now, really cool. And I could run a slow command in the background. I could run something like slow and child in background, so slow is running now. Slow is just not doing anything, it's just counting numbers. Um, and then I could run something like ls in my shell, nice, pwd, uh, cd, pwd. Oops, that didn't really work. My shell doesn't have any, direct, uh, any sense of directory, right? <laughs> it doesn't know. Um, but uh, still, um, I think it's a good way to start from here, and I encourage you to make it more awesome from here. Start from this basic shell and make it more awesome. Maybe give it some job control, give it some redirection, things like that. And that's all I have to say for now. Um. <laughs> Thanks for listening.